five of nine from the Privilege Insurance GT Championship, the Grand Prix support race at Silverstone following the Formula One event. On pole position, the mighty Lister Storm really running riot in qualifying on this long Grand Prix circuit, heading off the efforts of Wynne Percy in the Harrier, second on the grid. Third fastest in practice, the Saline Mustang out for the first time in the championship. Peter Owen will start that one. And fourth, John Greasley in his familiar blue coral portion. So a big crowd staying on after the Formula One event to watch this race. A 50-minute format, doesn't matter how many laps you do, the chequered flag will come out as the leader crosses the line for the first time after exactly 50 minutes from the moment the pole position man, Ian Flux, crosses the start-finish line. The lights go from red to green, and they're racing for the fifth round of the Privilege Insurance GT Championship. So, Flux leads the Lister Storm, and very close indeed into Cops for the first time. Contact, Colin Blower, and that was the Di Tommaso Pantera of Christian Van. Somebody in trouble even before they got to the start line as well. Well, that's a heavily damaged Harrier, the number 36 car, Russell Morgan at the wheel. Yellow flags are out. Oh, goodness. Now, he, I think, was probably involved in that as well. Wellings guest Porsche 911 Turbo being pushed away is the Christian Van machine. And uh, Owen having some sort of handling problems with the Mustang. Uh, misses a gear and through goes the Jaguar XJ220. Well, now the Mustang with its uh, mighty Ford V8 is going to have those sort of handling problems all the way around. Basically, the tyres really just can't quite cope with all that power at low speed. Problems for the Lister Storm. Huge amounts of smoke coming off the right-hand front corner as the influx runs out of road. Well, we're just behind him now in the Mustang. On the right-hand side by the uh, tyre wall there is the Lister Storm. So Ian Flux out of it. Well, in fact, it wasn't smoke, it was steam pouring out. A stone broke the drive belt for the water pump, and the car cooked itself just as quickly as that. So Ian Flux out of the race. Riding again with Colin Blair in the TBR Cerbera. Just ahead of us, Gary Ward drives these races on his own in the Mirage. And here is a horsepower battle par excellence. Blower gets the power down a wee bit earlier. And that throaty V8 of the TBR, he's still got the Mirage alongside. Gary Ward not giving up until he gets to the braking area. So three goes to TBR, and Ward now with the second of the Blue Coral Porsches. Nigel Barrett behind him. Steve O'Rourke, Tim Sugden, Porsche 911 GT2 machine, and atomic batteries to power and boosters full on flying past. There goes the number seven Fonturi of Alistair Davidson. French car, magnificent flame out as the twin turbo engine comes off the throttle. Really does look spectacular. Paint it black and you can mistake it for the Batmobile. So through goes the Yellow Harrier, that is the leader. Christian Van trying to explain to the team and pensive looking talk hill tearing what happens to their car. Number 47, Mustang. What a marvellous sound that car produces. Peter Rowan wrestling around with it. And Colin Blair in the TPR now as we ride with him, hounding the second of the Saline Mustangs. That's Dave Warnock at the wheel of the 46 machine. And another massive V8 battle. Marvellous. What a great noise they do make. And a third V8's trying to get involved on the act there, the Marcos behind them as well. So for fans of big, grumbly power units, this is 50 minutes of sheer ecstasy. Uh, Colin Blower looking for way round, and with the superior braking and chassis, the TVR dives down the inside into Brooklyn. Holds it through Priory. Meanwhile, second place, John Greasley, Coming under pressure now from the number 33, Marcos of Nick Carr, fourth for the Jaguar. And uh, Valentine Lindsay brings his Harrier into the pits. Problems for an... Oh, very big problems indeed for the number 60 machine. Matthew Manderson spitting off a tyre from the rim. So I'm afraid that Darian is in for a long, slow limp home.
see the incidents that caused the puncture, but uh, no doubting its problems. Coming into the pits too, the number 12 machine of Gary Ward. And as the clouds draw back, the Mustang are coming under pressure now from the Lotus. Duncan Heisman in the number 34 machine, sharing it with former Eurosport Grand Prix commentator Allard Kalf. These two Dutchmen getting together with the Lotus and looking very competitive indeed. Oh, Heisman just has a think about it down the inside of the Mustang. Dave Warnock wasn't really leaving him very much room. Well, again, the Lotus with a very nimble chassis and better chance of putting its power down. Will he be able to out-drag the Mustang onto start-finish straight? Simple answer, no. Warnock got the thundering horsepower down very neatly indeed there. Lights ablaze. Win 30, multiple British touring car champion. Endurance racer, all-round superstar. Tin Top Tim, ready to go. Waiting for this car to come in, the EMI Emka Porsche. Steve O'Rourke following Mick Quave's four-wheel drive escort. And Tim Tuckman will take over the Porsche. So, first of the front running pit stops. Down pit road he comes, and this is a tight and sinuous pit road, very windy. Some of the day's uh, motorsport supplements fluttering around the circuit. Still less damaging to the cars, I think, than the Silverstone hair. Into the pits and to rest comes the MK911 GT2. Tim Sugden gets in. You may wonder where Steve O'Rourke is in all this. He's got out the other door. And the number 47 Mustang, Peter Rowan at the wheel. Back to its teammate, the number 46 machine with Duncan Heisman still challenging. And Heisman, oh, goodness me, Heisman went for a gap and neglected to allow for the fact that the Mustang would continue its forward progress. So contact between the two of them. Heisman restarts, stalls, restarts again. And the Mustang's on the grass as well. Heisman really furious there, getting too much power down too quickly. And the Mustang has only got three wheels. And it looks to be shedding one of those as well. So the front suspension shattered on the Mustang. The wheel is at least in contact with the ground. Now it's come off the tyre hose and the bodywork. But both of those cars into the pits and I think effectively out of the race. The number 66 Marcos comes in. So Simon Tate to hand over. And here is the Mustang pit 47. Changes drivers and leaves 46. I think we'll go no further. More grumbling. No, absolutely, those hand signals. Un uh, unmistakable. More grumbling, I was about to say, as the number 56 Marcos leaves. Andy Purvis has handed it over now to uh, Ian Astley. That car going very well indeed. Tin Top Tin Sugden up to speed in the Emka Porsche. And still leading this race. Win Percy in the Harrier yet to pit. On board now with Allard Kalf. Following the second of the Saline Mustangs out of the pits. Heisman and the first of the Saline cars came together, as we saw a moment or two ago. Now the number 47 machine, Peter Rowan, has handed over to James Kay. Number 33, Nick Carr, Marcos, rolling to a halt. Bad news indeed for them. So it looks as if Chris Marsh is not going to get a go in it. Certainly doesn't seem to be in any danger of it getting back to the pits. So more retirements and more laps under his belt for the leader. The indicators come on. I wanted the slower 911s just to uh, allow Wim Percy the safe and secure knowledge that he's been seen. And the pace car is out. The safety car running just ahead of Wim Percy and commendably running at great speed around the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. And yet Mercedes pace car really being hustled around very quickly indeed. Driven, in fact, all weekend by Formula 3000 racer Oliver Gavin, so he ought to know his way around Silverstone.
having raced here long enough. A replay now of Duncan Heisman going around Dave Warnock. Warnock still on the right here of Heisman, and as Heisman tries to close the gap, well, Warnock either takes to the grass and has an accident later, or holds his line and has an accident there and then. So it was a no-win situation, I'm afraid, for both drivers. The car out, some of the cars coming down into the pit lane now. Colin Blower brings in the 55 car, the TDR Cerbera. And he will hand over to Rover expert, well, front-wheel drive anything expert, Dave Loudon. Loudon really enjoying the chance to uh, thunder round in the TDR. In two comes the number 45 Lotus, Andrew Bramley bailing out. <laughs> Handing over to Guy Morris. And now, as the leader arrives at the pit lane, Wynn Percy, as stupid as ever, because there's no point plodding around behind the safety car, and into the pits he comes, losing as little time as possible, he hopes, during the changeover. Of course, they'll then have to rejoin the tail of the queue, but uh, they have lapped a number of cars, so it's not as long a queue as maybe it might be. Getting in now, Charlie Cox, touring car racer, and touring car commentator now. Australian came over to this country, uh, worked in radio, now in TV. Charlie Cox, survivor of uh, one of the biggest touring car accidents seen in the UK in a very long while. Went off absolutely flat out on the climb up to the chicane at Thruxton in a, the most monumental way. Now, the TVR, I'm sure, should not be sounding like that right about now. And that's what happens when you get a car into a corner in neutral. Well, straight out of the pit. Well, he's got the engine back. Now, that's a surprise because he was clearly in neutral and stalled. Now he's restarted the engine, but it is pouring something out under the car. And it looks as though it may well be steam. Somebody else with a very smoky car pulling off the number 51 machine, Jeff Kimber Smith. So that's out of the running. Now, the Steve O'Rourke, and now driven by Tim Sugden, uh, MK Porsche, we saw. Let's look at this replay now, see how it all went silent. And then the car just spins away with no power. So there was the TVR, restarts. But uh, clearly the dials <laughs> rocketing off the uh, stops, I would have thought there. And Dave Loudon not getting a chance to enjoy the TVR as we've been looking forward to. Yes, the Steve O'Rourke, Tim Sugden, GT2 machine now, looking to outdrag the Marcos right from the start. But I don't know, strangely, doesn't seem quite to have the power that it normally does. A little flounder uh, in the middle of the field in the early sessions, and that's certainly no reflection on Steve O'Rourke's driving. He's quick enough. It, tucking in behind the 56 Marcos, though. Astley at the wheel. This is the Tate Stevens Marcos, the 66 machine we saw running strong early on, leading their category, GT3. Whoosh, through goes Win Percy. Whoosh, through goes another Harrier. So uh, the leader putting another lap up on the Marcos. Not Win Percy now at the wheel, of course, Charlie Cox. And a very, a very evenly matched pairing, very good pairing they are indeed. Got the car out, finally running properly for the first time in the last round of the series at Alton Park. They missed the Donington Park race because the car had gear selector problems. And they are now closing in on this battle. 47 Mustang. James Kay at the wheel. And I don't think the Marcos will hold on too long ahead of them. Astley in the Marcos. K him in the Mustang, then Sugden in the Porsche, and is he trailing something, some liquid coming out of the basket? It may just be an overflow, he's only just come out of the pits, Charlie Cox in the Harrier, seemed to be trailing something out of the left rear corner in the last fast right-hander. Kane out, muscling around the back of Astley, another thundering V8 battle. Two blue coral cars running in close company. 
Both drivers changed over, of course. So John Griesling now taking over from John Morrison in the number 20 machine, second in the race. And right behind them is the third place car, the Michael Verges and Chris Ward Harrier. Talking of Harriers, Wim Percy finds his way past Tim Sugden. Sugden and O'Rourke leading the GT2 class. Percy leading the race and the GT1 category at the moment. Coming up behind the Astley and K battle. Oops, and tyre squeal everywhere. And there goes the Astley and K battle as Astley skeets off backwards into the gravel traps. Don't think Ian Astley's coming out of there. Marcos buried very firmly. He's restarted the engine, but I'm afraid that's probably not going to do him much good. Charlie Cox now with a slightly easier task then just to chase down James Kay. Kay will be running cleaner and more predictably when he's not trying to overtake somebody. But Charlie Cox has an easier job on his hands, but Charlie Cox is smoking very heavily. All of a sudden there, the Harrier just puffed out smoke. Now I wonder, was that little trail of something earlier, the foreboding signs of an engine blow up? Was it leaking water? It's certainly leaking something. And that appears to be the end of the race for the Harrier. I think it's spraying out its coolant. It's certainly not coming from the exhaust side. That's on the right-hand side of the car. It's spraying out a haze of something from the left-hand side. And that is coolant. The Harrier, I'm afraid, is boiling its way out of the lead. While it is a hot afternoon at Silverstone, no question about it. Matt is handing the lead of the race to John Greasley. John Morrison held the blue coral car number 20 in second place, while Wim Percy led the race in the Harrier. And the Harrier is still ahead on the road, but as he heads to the pits, there is John Greasley, and Greasley knows exactly what's going on. He could probably feel the car getting a little bit wayward in the last two or three turns and wondered why as he ran over the coolant. And now Charlie Cox brings the Harrier back into the pits, and that's a sad end for the car. A sad end for that pairing for this race. They look very strong indeed. And I'm sure they were looking forward to a good battle with the Lister Storm. That didn't materialise after the Lister Storm dematerialised on lap one. And then a romp home to the flag for Charlie Cox. Well, that's a sadly ended now as well. The crew going under the uh, rear bodywork, but Wim Percy's face, I think, says it all. When your car comes back into the pits, it's never good news. Everything seems to be uh, intact. No major clouds of spray, but Wim Percy's body language says it all, and Charlie Cox won't be particularly happy either. Very disconsolate Aussie. Not his usual cheery self. It might take him a couple of minutes to come up with a snappy reply to that one. So now we're looking at the first and second place cars here. Chris Ward taking over from Michael Verges in the Harrier. And a replay as the Quaife Escort gets grassing. Paul Lee at the wheel now, having taken over from Mick Quaife, just proving that four-wheel drive isn't the answer to everything all the time. Rattling back over the kerbs and uh, back into the race laps earlier that was. Now then, John Breesley, the number 20 Blue Coral Porsche, leading the race. And in the number 52 machine right behind him, Chris Ward in second place. Battle between the Venturi and another of the Harriers. The Harrier getting fast on the inside. And as they come up to the line, nine seconds to go to the 50-minute marker. Five, four, three, Greasley has to go another lap, two seconds from the end of the race. He slowed right down to try and hold on for the chequered flag, but he has to go another lap. So the final lap gets extended into another final lap and another chance for Preston driver Chris Ward to try and overtake John Greasley's blue coral Porsche. Well, Greasley now having slowed right down at the end, Chris Ward must have wondered exactly what was going on unless he was looking at his watch, and that I doubt. Greasy's been puffing out blue smoke for a while. One bank of cylinders of the uh, Flat 6 in his Porsche. Will that mean at the end of his race, or will he continue? The Jaguar continues. The 
looking more competitive here on the fast Silverstone Grand Prix circuit than it has anywhere else this season. And so it should do. It was, after all, designed for the high speeds of Le Mans and for Le Mans alone. GC3 leading Marcos, still rolling on inexorably. Through Beckett, don't get twitchy and lose it now. Down a cog. Holding it over to the left-hand side, aiming for a late apex at the right. It really is sliding on its tyres, over the kerbs, power on. And now half a lap left as they come out of the veil through club. John Griesley leads Chris Ward, Porsche leads Harrier. Could a Harrier still win this race? Into bridge they come. Griesley has to throw it away now for Ward to win. Chris Ward is just not close enough. I think John Greasy has done the work that's required to win this one. 45 Lotus in third place. Bramley and Morris have driven very well indeed to bring that car up into third, but here is the battle. John Greasy waits to see the chequered flag this time round. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Yes, finally. Another couple of minutes of uh, panic. Might just have seen Chris Ward get ahead of him, but this time the chequered flag does come out. John Greasley wins it. Second place for the Harrier then. Chris Ward following him across the line. Third place for the Lotus and first in the GT2 category for Bramley and Morris. A good race for them, no question about that. And Tayson Stevens, the number 66, Marcos chasing the Jaguar across the line. They win the GT3 category. Well, everybody passing the chequered flag, but in fact the race didn't finish there. Well, it didn't finish there for Michael Burgess and Chris Ward at any rate. They came across the line first in the GT2 category, and that's why Ward didn't try for outright victory. They've been struggling with a misfire all the way through the race, and then they struggled in the post-race scrutineering bay. The car disqualified for running too low. So Greasy and Morrison, the winners then. Bramley and Morris move up to second and win GT2 ahead of Barrett and Gustafsson. Lloyd Nairdos in the Jaguar fourth. KNO in fifth in the Mustang. Sixth overall and Sutton. So after five of the nine rounds of the championship, Lloyd, Sugden and Tate in charge.